Hey everybody, Rebel Cloud 9 here, and today I'm going to be building uh, something <laughs> really weird and bizarre, but it's going to be super fun. It is from Hasegawa, their Zero Fighter. Um, I picked this up with my sister, actually. I went to a hobby store, she tagged along with me because we were in Calgary, and uh, she found this one, this P40 Warhawk. And she saw them, these were like all on sale, and she thought, oh, I've got to have that. She wants to learn how to build stuff whenever she gets around to it. Uh, she wants me to teach her. So she bought this Warhawk, and she said I had to buy one too so I could teach her how to build. But, um, yeah, there's really not much to these things. I picked the Zero because they didn't have a Spitfire or a 109, and Zero's always a nice one to build. Um, she wants to build this kind of camo scheme but she's going to replace the uh, mouth here with a uh, Totoro smile and of course a Totoro eye and I think she wants to put a soot sprite on the instead of the uh, tiger there so she just wants to do something kind of fun and I'm like you know what if you <laughs> if you want to build build whatever the heck you want I'll I'll help you out so anyways like I said I bought the zero it's a nice little kit and uh, there, this is the Eggplane series. They're just these squished up, funny looking kits. And I thought they would, I really thought they would die out, but Hasegawa keeps spilling these things out more and more. And so I'm kind of happy that they're still coming around. Uh, the other one I'd like to get is the Space Shuttle. Whenever I find that one, I'm going to get it. It's got like a little astronaut floating out. Not exactly sure what this girl in Japanese attire has to do with anything. I, I don't get it. Is it just is it just to make it more cute or or appealing? I I I, I don't get it. Uh, but uh, at least you get a nice model. And uh, I have, I don't know if I've built too many or any really Hasegawa kits. You know, I did the um, the Revel Gawa He One Eleven. That was kind of it. Uh, I don't think I think this is probably one of the first times I actually built a genuine Hasegawa kit. They don't come down here that much to my local hobby store. I have asked him about it, and he says they just uh, they just don't sell. So, uh, and he's right because there's like there's four of them that are sitting in the store, and they've been there for about five years. And I don't really want those ones. There's one there I'm kind of partial to, but so let's take a look in the kit. So we get this nice kind of dark green plastic here. And the model itself is about 48 scale. There's no real scale to it, but I would say it's like about 48 scale, given the proportions of all the pieces. Um, again, just squished. So, made in Japan, Hasegawa. There's an engine with a little detail on it. Looks pretty good. Uh, there's a little seat here. And landing gear, we get wheels... Are these wheels up? Or are these... No, no, sorry. These are just the wheels. Okay. No wheels up. Um, here we have the main wings. Ailerons here. Raised panel lines. I'm going to rescribe all those because it's going to be super, super simple to do. I'm not going to be, you know, stressing myself out about it. Plus, it's just going to look a little bit better. And then we get this nice teardrop-shaped... Um, clear canopy and it has these really nice raised panel lines on it so masking this off is going to be just beautiful so that's something to look forward to and we have a very nice simple instruction booklet you probably won't have any problems <laughs> not putting this thing together it's just that easy um, but yeah oh okay oh that's how the wheels and those go on okay that makes sense uh, and what's kind of cool is you actually get two decal options but the the second decal option is for the wrong plane so this one here is AI 155 um, that's a Pearl Harbor Zero, and this is an A6M5, which is a later Zero. 
but you know what? I like I, you know, I'm telling like I'm criticizing it, but I'm actually not. I'm actually super excited because here's the decals, and here's that uh, a is it an I? Uh, yeah, it is an I. A I one one five. They're gonna fit on a seventy second scale of zero. So yeah, I get some extra bonus decals out of that. So that's pretty sweet. And then you get the instrument panel here. Um, you get a whole bunch of other little bands and things that you put on the on the rest of the plane. And the the, the decals look pretty good. Um, I haven't used new decals from Hasegawa before. This is 2008 when this particular kit was uh, released. So they're not that old. They should be, you know, pretty good. Uh, the only thing I have a the only thing I can say is a bit of a downside is the box art shows a pilot and there is no pilot it's just an empty seat and a pilot kind of a cartoony pilot to match the cartoonness of the plane that would have been really cool but you don't get it so whatever it's gonna look good anyways so I'm gonna go and take a second look at the parts and uh, get started here this is gonna be a real fun kit so the first thing I want to do on this model is um, rescribe these panel lines on here and I'm just going to show you quickly how to do it. Um, you can buy scribing tools which is on my list um, but you know for a simple scribing tool you can use the back of your exacto knife. I've seen a lot of modelers you know scribing like this. Uh, personally it doesn't work as well for me. I know it works well for a lot of other modelers, so uh, give that a try and see if it works for you. Again, that's using just kind of the back because it's more a little bit more dull and thicker. Uh, one way that works for me is using a pin vise and you put a sewing needle in here and you keep it kind of you know, about, I've got a couple you know, centimeters of it out here, maybe half an inch, and uh, this is going to this is pretty nice to go at because I have a lot of, you know, control holding this pin vise. If you don't have a pin vise, uh, it's one of the tools I strongly recommend for any any modeler to uh, to have. I uh, I lent this to my dad when he was building a ship model, and he, as soon as he finished building the ship, he immediately went out and bought one of these himself. Oh, set myself there. Uh, and, and he loves this thing, and he's he was kind of like, I wish I had one of these back in the day, um, you know, because he builds a lot of ship models and stuff. So um, this is just a uh, piece of uh, metal here. It's got a straight edge on it, though. That's what I want. Um, you can find, like, straight edge rulers and, and things like that. Metal works better because plastic you can carve up again. Metal, that's a lot harder to do. So all I do is, especially with straight lines like this, which are super simple and compared to others, is you just put it down like that and pull across. And so, yeah, I've kind of followed the original line here of where the where the raised panel is so I have an exact guide of where it needs to to go or be and then when I'm done all I'll do is just take some uh, you know regular sandpaper and sand it off like this and that'll this will remove the raised panel line and then you just take it in and you just simply uh, clean it out like that it's just that simple to do it does take a bit of practice and like I said, for this project, it's going to be easier to do because there's not really a lot of uh, pieces to it. So, uh, or sorry, pieces to to uh, to scribe. But yeah, that's one of the easiest ways to to do this without actually buying a scribing tool. And you can buy plenty of scribing tools from all sorts of uh, different uh, websites and manufacturers. But I'm going to go clean up these edges. They're a bit sharp. I'd like them to be a little bit more uh, dull finished scrubbing the wings they're all uh, they're all finished turned out pretty well I think and I have to wait and see how they look once they're painted and I took apart the fuselage halves here and had to sand this area down a bit here it was very very kind of sharp so I just rounded that off a bit um, the fit 
I'm actually a little worried about actually, uh, it looks a little wonky. Uh, you know, it'll probably be good. It just needs a little bit of sanding in the in the seams and everything. Um, and then comes the part of painting the cockpit. Um, for like the seat and that little kind of bucket that fits in here, that's going to be green. Uh, since I'm painting a green gray version, this uh, part here, the headrest, where the antenna would be, this is green, same cockpit green. The control panel here would be green. And this part here is black. So I'm just going to do that all by hand. It'll be kind of easier that way. It's, it's going to be super simple anyways. And then I'm going to mask this off soon. But it'll look like that. Uh, and the one thing I forgot to do, guys, I really did. Uh, I remembered it before I started filming, but then I forgot about it. Um, is when you come to uh, scribing your own panel lines, what happens if you, you know, veer off, like I did a little bit here, this isn't very deep, but sometimes you, you know, you veer off and you go, oh crap, I just ruined my entire model, what do you do? Uh, liquid Surface Primer from Tamiya, this stuff works really, really well, it's for scratches and things like that. You can also thin it down and actually prime your entire model with it. You need Tamiya Lacquer Thinner, however, that's, uh, where Oh, that's in the other room right now, but um, you need lacquer thinner to clean your brush and if you're going to thin this down to prime your model. Um, but it's very, very good stuff, except it has one heck of a stink. And it also comes in uh, gray. So if you need gray instead of uh, white, uh, there, there you go. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. And I noticed something else on this uh, model here is there's a little peg down below, but there's nothing, there's no spare parts. Basically, you're using every single piece of the kit. So there's, there's no spare parts to say what it would be. And uh, I, I can't figure out. I'm just curious as to what it may have been. I'm wondering... If an older version of this kit had a had a drop tank or something, whoops! Oh no, wait, I want to go there. I don't want to go all the way around the propeller shaft, though. Okay. So, don't know how exactly I'm gonna clamp these two halves together, but I'll figure figure something out. I think I'll just hold on to it for a little while, at least. Alright, so yeah, they're shifting apart slightly, very, very slightly. Be able to... Yeah! Oh, that's actually a good fit. Just needs a little bit of pressure. Cool. That looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm just going to hold this for a little while and um, then what I'm going to do is add some um, extra thin cement into all the seam lines. The one that I'm most worried about is this one right here in the front. It's kind of really bowed in there a little bit and uh, I just, it, you know, it's like sanding in a groove like that. That's just going to be a bit difficult or take more time I should say. Uh, which I'm not looking forward to, but whatever, I will get to that. And uh, this needs a little uh, extra thin in here. So, yeah, this is just a really simple, you know, fun model to do. And uh, I just want to see this real quick. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Looks pretty great. Oh, these are hilarious. I love it. Uh, Rob at Basic Modeling, he was he's one of the first people I ever saw that, that actually went ahead and built one of these things. I think, yeah, he did a Thunderbolt. And uh, when I saw this, I kind of went, oh, yeah. That would be fun to do, actually. So I make sure this still spins. Okay. And so I'm supposed to put the engine on 
next, which I can do because I'll just paint that black later and hand paint that as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Really, uh, <laughs> really getting a kick out of this little thing. So I actually got quite a bit done on this little guy here. Looks pretty good. Uh, fits are fairly good. Fairly good. I ran into a few problems, you know. Um, still mostly with just this part here. But the the wings, they just need a little bit of glue, and you just push them together, and it's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, the fit is pretty pretty darn nice. Like the wings, they fit kind of only one way, so you're not really flopping around with them. Um, and the wheels, I glued the struts on here, so I had some kind of a brace. Um, you know, when I put it down, it's not, you know, not accidentally going to bump into damage the bottom coat here. Um, and what's really nice is the wheels. They basically only fit one way, so there's nothing to do. You know, there's no wiggle room with them really. You just put them in, put glue on, and you're you're laughing. Um, yeah, I painted up the inside here green, and it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And then, of course, the, the top panel there is black. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the decal here uh, barely fits. It does fit, but just barely. You kind of have to get it to move around a little bit. Um, what's kind of weird, though, I looked at the back of the decal because all the dials are, are, are just black, and I thought, what's going on here? Is it like one of these weird reversible decals and nope but on underneath they're all white so obviously something went wrong when they were printing these because there's the, you know these two at the top are basically the only ones that look correct and the rest of them are just black and then you got this little bit of yellow here a little bit of red on that one so that's a little sad I wish I had a better decal but you're not really going to notice that anyway so eh. Um, and then the other thing here is I cut out a piece of styrene, shaped it up a little bit to make a headrest, painted it brown, um, just to add a little bit of color in the canopy. And speaking, um, here's the canopy here. I masked it off. It was very easy to do. It looked pretty awesome. And uh, so I'm going to go and just temporarily glue it like that so I can airbrush. And uh, yeah, this it's all looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with this. Um, <clears throat> like here's the cowling. So what happened with the cowling is I put it on here yesterday, and I looked at it and went, "Ah, oh, the fit's okay. Looks pretty good. Nothing really to complain about." And I'm looking at it and going, "Why didn't they put the gun, you know, ports on here?" It's really annoying. And I'm looking inside here, and there's these two holes right here. There's these like ovals. I'm going, oh my goodness they covered up the gun ports. Why the heck would they cover up the gun ports? Well, at least, you know, I have a template of how I can do it. So, I put it down like this, and I'm looking at the box. And the box art, I'm like, ah, oh, look, there's the guns. Right there. Why, why, why do they have the guns on the box? Oh, they even have it on the complete model. Why do they have it on the, oh. You idiot. <laughs> you had it upside down. So, yeah, that's that's how I roll, I guess. Um, and then here's the propeller. And so I sent it and got that down. I'm just leaving it on the stub here so I can paint it easier. And Yeah, this is going to be brown. This is going to be a semi-gloss black. And, which actually I should grab that paint while I'm thinking about it because I'm going to forget in a second. Oh, there we go. And I need the underside color, and I can't find it here. I think I used it up, which is why I bought another one. Yeah, JA Gray XF14. I'm going to go and paint that on now. And so I've got four colors to airbrush, and it's going to look pretty cool when it's all done.
So airbrushing went really, really well. Um, here's the semi-gloss black on the cowl. Looks pretty good. And this is going to be left off until basically I'm done the model. Um, painted the green on here. Looks pretty good. Quite happy with how that turned out. And of course the underside looks very nice. And then I did the propeller. I've never actually airbrushed the propeller color here before. Very, very nice color. This is um, Red Brown XF64. Really, really nice. I like that. And then I just painted the um, <clears throat> the uh, gear covers the same gray green. And then these are the rest of it's just going to be hand painted. I can put those on whenever. But uh, yeah. So the next step is going to be masking the uh, underside here. So my only concern is getting this curve here properly. It shouldn't be too difficult, it might take me a few tries, but it'll be okay in the end. So yeah, just got to get that curve down right. And uh, luckily they give you this like nice kind of guide on how to mask off the side here on the box, so you're not, uh, you're not lost. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really just a fun little little weird model to uh, to build so I'm quite happy with everything that's going on with it so far so like I said I'm gonna go and mask this thing up and then airbrush took the uh, tape off of the bottom and man it looks really good look at that, I got that nice curve in there um, to get the curve was kind of easy all I did is I took um, this 10 millimeter Tamiya tape and I just made a, a stripe from here to here and I just took my pencil I uh, made this line following here and then just cut it out and uh, quite happy with that so the next one here is the canopy and I'm gonna cut it off hopefully this will work uh, ah come on ah there we go okay that's pretty good so you can see there the inside is all nice and green and the outside is this nice dark green. So I'm going to go and remove all this masking. This is going to take me just a little while to do. But uh, the next... Yeah, break it. Break it, why don't you? You don't need to show everybody. You need to just break it. Yeah, oof. Uh, yeah, the next step is to, um, to uh, paint, paint future on it. I'm going to do a whole whole model that's gonna just I'm just gonna brush it on and um, I'm gonna paint this part here black the firewall I'm gonna paint the firewall black I'm gonna paint kind of this part uh, here in between the engine um, I'm gonna paint that black I'm gonna paint the engine cylinders silver I'm gonna put a black wash on it so you can see all the lines on there um, then this part of the front, this is going to be a dark blue-gray color, which is how they were on the Sakai engines. And, yeah, then, yeah, the future and all that stuff. So, uh, it's going to look pretty good. And, like I said, I'm going to go remove all this, all these pieces from the, uh, maskings there. And, uh, I've got to do the gear struts as well. So, but it's coming along, and I'm, uh, you know, I have... I've painted all this in a day. You know, I started this last night when you're watching this. Uh, you know, you're watching it in sequence. You don't really know how long I've worked on 
parts and pieces. I, I started, I built the whole thing last night. Painted this this morning. Um, it's 8.30 and I've, this is all done. I painted this at about 6.30 and it, it's come out nice and dry. And yeah, if I leave the future, if I paint the future on now, which I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do two coats. Maybe three if I remember. Sometimes I do three. Usually two is enough. Um, but at least two. And uh, then tomorrow it'll be ready for decaling by morning. So it's going to be pretty awesome. So it's a quick, simple build, but it's going to be very, very fun and enjoyable. And like I said, I'm really, really, really keen to get more of these now that I've built this one. They're, they're just a lot of fun. So if you're, if you're in the market and you see one of these things and you're like, huh, that looks kind of goofy, go buy it. I think you'll enjoy it.